Hey guys, so um, as part of a different project, I need to draw a figure today, and I thought I would show you guys how I go about constructing a figure. Now, normally I would use a non-photo blue pencil for this part, but because I'm going to ink this and then erase the pencils, I'm just gonna use a regular pencil with H lead in it. And um, usually I have a pose in mind. I'm, I'm kind of, uh, <laughs> I'm kind of being, because I don't have a good pose in mind. I have some reference up on my computer and uh, I'm drawing a pose for um, for the alcohol marker palette tutorial demonstration test thing I'm going to do. So um, I needed a pose. And this is going to be a pretty basic pose because it is late and I don't have good ideas. And I'm also narrating while I draw so you know, it's a bad combination. So, when I am drawing a figure, I usually start out with a rectangle. And the problem with this rectangle is it is probably going to come off the page. Um, we'll see. So I start with a rectangle, and then I draw in an egg, and that's the rib cage. And then I draw an oval, which is gonna become the pelvis. And I draw what looks like the axle on a car. That's the pelvic bone where the legs come from. And I do these two little jutting bits out. And if you're interested in learning where I learned anatomy, I highly recommend you read Andrew Loomis's Figure Drawing for All It's Worth and the Glenville Poo Drawing Manual. Both of them are fantastic resources. The information they give is um, very applicable for artists ranging from fine artists to animators to comic artists like myself. Uh, particularly, particularly the Glenville Poo Drawing Manual. Um, he used to work for Disney and the way he breaks down the human body is just beautiful and learnable and um, it makes sense. So I already drew the head is just kind of a ball right now and the neck necks like a can like a soda can um and where the neck sits on the body um the neck doesn't sit at the very top of the body it sits um let me draw a side view for you guys it sits um so this is the rib cage from the side it actually sits about there with the shoulders so you don't want to, you don't want to put it right up here. And you want your rib cage to slope forward like that a little bit. And um, when I'm blocking this in, I use like kind of a modification on the skeletal form that uh, that Andrew Loomis demonstrates. So I basically have the gesture before I've done any real work and it only takes five minutes, but this is the bulk of my figure drawing. I mean, you can always refine later, you can refine from reference, um, but if you need to capture a gesture quickly, this is a good way to go about doing it. So I'm gonna use cylinders to block in the legs and triangles for the feet. And I also think the best way to get good at figure drawing is um, first to find a method that works for you, like the two, like the one I use all the time and um, the books I recommended and then put it into practice every single day for at least one hour a day for a year at least a year M longer if you can get it draw from life draw from photos draw your animals because your animals can be broken down graphically very similarly um, just put as much time into memorizing and learning the structures as you possibly can arms are handled in a very similar way. And I use just like little round uh, shapes to, to indicate where I want the hands and the basic gesture for the hands.
So we have a very rough figure drawing. It's not going to win any awards. It's not intended to win any awards. It's intended to get me where I need to go. So after this is done, I can start refining. And I really suggest you do not begin refining before you get to this point because you're going to get so caught up in details that the head's going to be too long or, you know, your feet are going to go off the page or the head, there isn't room for the top of the head, right? But if you block it all out first before you're committed to any specific details, um, if I need to, I could just erase this whole thing and start all over. Like, I'm not attached to this. There's no face, there's no anything that, that, that I would be sorry to lose. So, the front of the head is kind of an oval shape. And um, so the way I handle the head is the circle right and then I like to do a crosshair and um, I drop that circle down so either into an oval or into sort of a spade shape and I have quickly demonstrated this for you guys before and I have tutorials on this uh, particular thing as well as how I do figure drawing on my blog nattosoup.blogspot.com but I know for many myself included seeing people do it is often very helpful. <laughs> so that's how I basically, break, very basically break down the head. So um, the face, see that crosshair I drew in the middle of the ball? The face is three, it's actually five eye widths wide. Um, if you have an anime or a manga influence style, you may be drawing the eyes larger. There, it may not truly be five eye widths. It might be f a rough four. But um, if you want to place your eyes correctly, you draw an eye shape in the middle on that crosshair, and then you put an eye of equal size on either side. And those circles I just drew are going to help me place and add shadow for the eyebrows. And this is going to be the nose, and that's going to be the mouth, and that circles the chin. And ears go from the top of the eyebrows in general to the bottom of the nose. Sometimes I like to sink them a little bit lower, just for an aesthetic choice. Looks actually might be the top of the eyes to the bottom of the nose. I think it is the top of the eyes to the bottom of the nose, not the eyebrows. I was thinking it looked too high. I've been doing this for so long that sometimes my hand, my hand knows, my brain doesn't always. And if you're looking for help on um, breaking down the human head for drawing, again, I recommend you turn to Andrew Loomis. He's got a, um, I don't remember the title for it, so you'll have to check the annotations for his, uh, I think it's just drawing the head and hands now that I, I think about it. So, still have that very basic figure. Time to start in on the hands. And I like to just gesturally rough in shapes before I get attached to them. And that really knowing the gesture um, without reference. That just comes from years of practicing, years of studying, years of doing sketches of it in my sketchbook. And actually, see this, so the hand should hit mid-thigh or a little higher. This hand is way too low. So off it goes. And that was because, you see, on women, the bottom of your elbow, the bottom of your, the, your forearm is supposed to hit the bottom of the rib cage. This arm is too long. That's why it's good to stop and evaluate. Um, don't get too caught up in what you're doing. Stop and evaluate as you go along because you can catch flaws early where it doesn't hurt if you have to make the corrections as opposed to like you've already inked it when you notice it and you're just like oh I hate myself for this but I don't want to I don't want to lose it because I put too much work into it and I need it for a tutorial or you know an assignment whatever 
whatever you're doing your drawing for. And um, if you have a manga style and you think to yourself, well, I don't, I don't really need to study anatomy because that, that comes up every now and then. Or you might say, well, the anatomy is really different. No, it's not. It's just stylized. Same goes for superhero styles with the big bulky shoulders and the tiny heads and the tiny waist and the chicken legs. Same goes for like um, super lean indie styles where, or noodles for arms. Like if you learn the basics, if you learn the basic structure, you can apply that to any style you're looking for. So um, the sooner, because I made, I made excuses about it not needing to understand anatomy too. And it, I wish, well, I mean, when I was a kid, these sort of, I, my library didn't carry, didn't have the Loomis books and didn't have the Vilpu manual and um, the internet didn't necessarily have the resources that people are creating now. So you guys, you guys are in great shape because you got the world at your fingertips. I didn't have the world at my fingertips and I didn't have any mentors. I didn't have anybody to like knock my head in and be like, Becca, you can't, you have to learn anatomy. So um, if you learn anatomy today and you're 15 or you're 17 or you're, even, you're 19, even 20, you're gonna be ahead of where I was when I was your age. So you're gonna be way better than me, way better than me when you're my age. So don't, don't let ability discourage you either. Because I'm playing catch up, but you'll be ahead of the game. All right, so we've got the basic figure blocked in. And for this particular video, I'm not really going to go into figural detail because I want to put some clothes on her as soon as I possibly can. <laughs> um, I don't want to be drawing the figure forever. And with everything, I do a rough block in first to see if the silhouette I have in mind works for the pose, works for the, the situation, the sort of thing I want to draw. If it doesn't, um, I go look for more reference. I have a Pinterest board where I pin clothing ideas for 7-inch Kara. And when I can't think of an outfit, when an outfit doesn't just like naturally spring to the top of my head, I go assemble one from my board. The thing about being an artist is um, inspiration is nice and inspiration happens. Like I'm not gonna deny that, but like if you wanna work, if you want to make money at this, if you want to do it as a career, you have to be able to work when you're brain dead and you don't have any inspiration at all. And that's where the muscle memory, the training is really beneficial. And that's where having reference is really beneficial. Because the training, I can do this in my, I can draw a very basic figure, a very basic uh, pose in my sleep. Like I, whatever, it's nothing. So, you know, if I'm sick at a con, for example, I have a repertoire of like five or six poses that I, I've done enough that um, I can just whip them out. Um, so, and I tend to get migraines at conventions now. So, so it's really good that I can work. And it's, I can draw them while people are talking to me if I need to. You know, I don't need to give my full attention and it's still gonna look good because I put the time in when nobody was watching. And that's really, like my number one secret to being an artist or a convention artist or an illustrator is you need to put the time in, you need to do studies and stuff when nobody is gonna see it, you know. At hand is still too low. All right, so uh, usually when I'm working in blue line, um, it doesn't start to look cluttered, but right now it's looking cluttered. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase some of my guidelines just to help me focus on what I'm doing. Cause it's a little difficult for me to narrate to you guys and draw and think. Um, I, have a, <laughs> I have ADHD, like legitimately, like since I was five. Um, and uh, it's just something I struggle with is juggling all of those balls. So I have to get rid of some of the clutter and I can get rid of that visual clutter. And if you find it distracting, if you find it like you, you just can't, you just can't see what you need to see, um, you can get rid of it once you've, once you've gotten down the shapes you need.
and you really don't want to press down hard enough that your pencil bites into the paper because you're never going to get that graphite up. So for toes, I draw little placeholder circles that really don't require a whole lot of refinement after that. And you know how I said the foot is a wedge? Well, no, actually I said draw the foot as a triangle. That's because a triangle is the front view of a wedge, which is basically what the foot is. This being the front part of the foot and this being the heel. And something a lot of artists, a lot of artists don't do is they don't draw enough heel. They draw like these little, um, it, how do I do it? Like this, right? And this is the leg. And then there's just like nothing there. Like, like, okay, the back of your leg should not be even with your, the back of your heel. It needs to come out some. In general, like as a rule of thumb, most people, their heels extend beyond the back of their leg or rather the back of their ankle. I've redrawn this hand so many times that the pose actually looks weird and awkward and doesn't work anymore. So it's gonna be like the what? The fourth time I've drawn that hand, right? Because if it doesn't work for you, get rid of it and start all over again. And usually I keep a, a drafting brush on my table. I know you guys have seen it around. Um, it's, I don't know where it is actually. It's somewhere, um, and usually I would use the drafting brush to brush away all the eraser crumbs that are kind of just getting in the way. So now I'm on the face, and I'll try not to block your view too, too much. I'll try to zoom in a whole lot too.
All right, so we have, sorry, we have a basic, a pretty basic um, drawing of my character, Kara. I showed you guys how I break down the figure. I gave you guys a few uh, quick peeks into more detailed aspects. Um, I will see you guys again with a inking tutorial for this piece.